So Galway 212, Roscommon, uh, 11 points. I'm here with Dara O'Connor here from the, the sideline view. Um, Dara, obviously, you've been on the channel a couple of times before after these games to uh, to give your thoughts on, on Roscommon. And I suppose, unfortunately, it's the it's the same same outcome again. It's very much kind of the same game. Um, what were your thoughts? Yeah, I'm nearly cursed at this stage by, by doing all these. Uh, they're very <laughs> similar enough. Um yeah, I mean, the first half was all right. Uh, it was kind of a slow burner, if you like, up until that first water break. Two teams were probably just feeling the game out. And they were, I mean, we had everyone back and go with and maybe had Shane Walsh up front at, at times. Um, so probably for a neutral, that first 17, 18 minutes was, was a poor watch. It got going a bit then. Um, and we kind of changed stuff a bit because the likes of Sean Malouli, um, Connor Daly, Davy Murray from the the yeah so like the, the backs were, were making chances happen um so like that for last fifteen minutes was was quite good now I, I was kind of keeping an eye on Twitter at half time to see what people were were, were saying and they were kind of being out out with Roscommon's defensive play which I could probably understand if they were from a neutral point of view it wasn't a great watch at times and. Yeah, you know, I suppose it doesn't suit our forwards. Um, you know, having Jeremy Mercedoni Smith, Connor Cox back in our 45, you know, kind of sl slogging away, it, it doesn't really, really, really suit their game. Um, yeah, I thought Galway were there for the taking today. I think that's a bit frustrating, if you like, because, you know, like if you look even the second half, their scores, a lot of them were from our mistakes, you know, really poor mistakes, giving the ball away, and they overturned it and punished us, and we couldn't do the same. To them, um, you know, they made a couple of mistakes. Even the goalkeeper was off his line. It just didn't bounce for, I think, Kieran Mercer at, at, at the time. We just didn't get that, that bounce of the ball. And in the, look, in the end goal, we were, I think, I think it was five points in the end. They were they, they won by end. Yeah, they were probably five points better than us, unfortunately, in, in that second half. And it's just, it's disappointing to end a really poor year. And it's probably our worst year, you know, maybe six, seven years um, in terms of we, we if we had a poor league, we had a good championship or vice versa. And, there's, there's nothing really to go off this year, so it's back to the drawing board for next year. Yeah, it did seem to be like a lot of frees and a lot of 44, like 45s and, and whatnot. And I remember even Connor Cox giving away one or two city frees as well, mm. and that allowed Galway to kind of build a bit of momentum. But yeah, in particular in the first half, I thought that like Galway were just a bit, they seemed that you could definitely tell there was probably a lack of confidence there between both teams. Like Shane Walsh missed a couple of early frees and yeah. Galway missed a couple of early chances. Like, I suppose in the second half, though, like like defensively, you were well set up. But I suppose if you have that defensive setup, you need to kind of take your chances on the on the counter attack. And I suppose Ross Common just didn't do that in the second half, and, and definitely at stages in the first half as well. Yeah, I mean, kind of in patches, you could see we probably had worked on how to try and break break down a sort of blank defense. Oh, we did see the old sort of slow um, play at, at times and you know that's what a blanket defense likes a team just passing it back and forth outside the 45 they won't do anything from there uh, so that's why it was probably good to see you know Connor Daly did score two points I thought our backs did all right today I think you know especially the half the, the half backs the dailies Sean Malouli Dave Murray even Brian Stack did a decent job on Shane Walsh for, for most of the game he's a hard player to, to keep quiet all the time um and and Ender Smith, to be fair to Ender, he, he put in a you know a, a good performance. Say there's a lot of pressure on him inside the county. You know, everyone from even from outside the county, everyone sees Ender Smith as you know Roscommon's main man and the go-to man. And sometimes he doesn't. He might just live up to his potential. And I sometimes think he probably doesn't. He nearly wants three or four Ender Smiths. That he doesn't like the pressure to have you know be that go-to man. But he did step up. He got three points today. Um, but we probably just didn't see enough from Connor Cox. Uh, Jeremy Mercer was in and out, but I think he got one point and Donny Smith scored one from play and I think a 45. So, you know, we have that forward talent and what we end up with was 11 points or 12 points in the end. You know, it's not it's not probably enough. And, you know, I even see people already saying, are we playing to our strengths? Are we, can we play a defensive team? Is it playing to the, our strengths of our forward line? And, you know, that's for the management to think about um, if Anthony is there next year, which, I mean, questions will be asked. It, it will be interesting to see, you know, the off-season, what, what what players are play next year, management uh, team and all that. So, it, yeah, some, th some thinking time for the summer now. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, and that's kind of what I was going to ask you next is obviously, like, I suppose winning a, a Connacht title definitely shouldn't be underestimated for Roscommon and 
I think Anthony Cunningham has bought himself probably a bit more time, especially with the COVID situation as well. And obviously bringing yeah. in Stephen Poacher, it's not going to, it's not going to click instantly with the fact that you don't have much time on the training pitch, but like, where would you have, would you still have Anthony Cunningham now at Roscommon or would there even, would you even be looking elsewhere and thinking maybe they just need to, to freshen things up and start from scratch, maybe going into 2022? Yeah, it is a hard one because you, you know the line nearly be careful what you wish for if, if, if you know if mm. you in term in terms of managers, um he has had three years, which is you know usually a, a fair crack at it um in, in terms of management. Um so yeah, it is a hard one. What I you know, if, if Anthony was manager next year going into division two, I would be still confident enough that we'd be, you know, in and around finishing second in division in division two, you know, we should be capable of challenging for, for promotion but kind of you're right probably say maybe fre a freshening up sometimes does help you know after three years the same voice if you like you know just an, an, a new voice in that dressing room um but yeah the problem for us is we just don't look like we're progressing at the moment we just look like we're going backwards each year uh you know today was slightly better than the male performance we know we I, I saw a bit more fight you know in in the play um especially the first half but it's the same old story, and we, we you know, we, we lost by five in in the end, and um, yeah, you know, go we go on to the, go on to the final against Mayo. Yeah, yeah, and I suppose another thing I wanted to ask you as well was obviously Connor Cox. Like for whatever reason, he doesn't seem to be yeah. playing to that same ability. Probably going back to twenty nineteen now at this stage, like. Yeah. You know, and in many ways, like he, he got subbed off there in the 55th minute, and he probably could have been taken off earlier because he seemed to be causing more problems for the team than actually good things for the team. Like, what did you make of that? Yeah, I think he's just lacking confidence, to be honest, because you're right. Since 2019, like last year, he was injured at the start of the league. He actually played, the la he started the last game before lockdown against Westmead, and he did all right. But against, you know, that lockdown just did some good things for, for some teams and some bad things for others, and it hasn't helped us. Um, and again, a bit like Ender Smith, maybe he just feels the, the, the pressure, like, the, you know, there is a lot of pressure as. You know, from outside the county, you know, Connor Cox, Ender Smith, they're the two big names that nearly everyone knows um, you know, that wouldn't watch Roscommon consistently. But I think he was probably left on because, you know, our bench is weak, weak enough. And you think if, if you do get a chance, look, Connor, you still rather have Connor Cox and maybe some other people on the ball. But I was kind of surprised when Jeremy Mercer was taken off but before um, Cox today. I thought at least, you know, Jeremy was looking... He was on the ball, you know, some a good bit. Um, whereas Cox, in the first, especially in the first half, just couldn't get into the game at all. And yeah, he took a few wild shots, but that, that's confident. We we all know he has the ability. Um, you know, to be, you know that twenty nineteen campaign, he was, he was scoring left, right, and centre. So I think it will come back. Maybe a Division Two campaign might get that back against some some weaker teams. You know, game back on the score sheet, and that's what we have to hope for. Yeah, yeah, no, that that's definitely the the main aim. And obviously, you haven't seen Galway in the flesh. How would you think they'll get on now against? Well, we'd have to feel that it's Mayo, obviously, with all due yeah. respect to, to Leitrim. Like, how would you see that game going now in a, in a Connacht final? I fancy Mayo. I wasn't really overly impressed with Galway. Now, maybe that's me, me, me sounding a bit bitter after the <laughs> beat versus Common, but um, I thought they were there for the taking today. Um, you know, especially like first half, I thought we actually had be the better of the play. Um, we gave a really poor goal away. Someone obviously switched off, and I think it was Peter Cook got in, in behind. Um, and yeah, the second half, you know, it was a lot of our mistakes that led to free kicks or, or, or a goal with scores. If you just watch that game back, I, I, I watched the highlights and it was like a lot of this was, was for Scammon's mistakes. The thing goal we have on their side is Jeremy and Killian O'Connor. Well, I, I presume they're both, they won't be playing. So that does even it up a bit. If they were playing, I'd definitely strongly fancy Mayo. Uh, but I know it may were only playing Sligo, but they brushed them aside very, very quickly last week in that in that first half, which was which was impressive. Um, so I I fancy, I fancy Mayo, but look, all we have the players to, to cause trouble. You know, Damien Comer looks back to a bit of a bit of himself today. You know, he was in the action. He was getting hits left, left right, and centre, and you know he was, it was a bit of the old school Comer. Uh, Shane Walsh has a lot more to give as well. Probably didn't have his best game today, but you know he still contributed. And now they have the likes of Matthew Tierney. And uh, chipping in, he's a reliable free taker, and you know even even the backs. I think you know Sean Kelly, uh, a cornerback, he, driving runs uh, up that field. I thought he was very good today. So God, we have the talent, no doubt about it. But whether they can click and beat and beat a Mayo side that um, are youthful, but they're they're brimming with confidence at the moment.
Mm. And I suppose lastly, obviously you're at the game in uh, in Hyde Park, and I suppose obviously not the not the best conditions, but it looks of it, and yeah. obviously probably not the the best game to go to from a Ross Common point of view. But what was yeah. it like anyway to be back and I suppose back at games again? Because I know for most fans, it's been a it's been a long time coming. Yeah, it was great it's just even to see that you know back actual people at, at games again. Um, you know, you, I was even thinking there like you could have even had a you know not not the one or two thousand, like you saw that terrace over there, just completely empty. So, mm. um, it, it could have been more full. I, I would have thought, anyways. But you know, it, it was good to even just even a few scores to get that bit of furore again. And uh, it, it it definitely probably helped the game. Definitely the second quarter after that water break, you know, the crowd was up a bit more, and it definitely kicked on the players. Uh, it, it, to sort of drive on a bit more, but um. Yeah, look, unfortunately, from our point of view, that especially after the second water break, once I mean, once goal, we got that second goal. It was even you see, see people leaving again. <laughs> you haven't seen that site, people yeah. leaving early for, for, for a couple of years. So, yeah, even just to see that, with I suppose when you see people leaving early, you know, it's not been a good day at the office. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 two ways about it, definitely. But, um, yeah, look, listen, cheers anyway, Dara, for coming on. I'll link down Soyline View as always for anyone to check it out. And, uh, and cheers for your time. Yeah, no bother, Aaron.